Good evening, my real news media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update. And in the news of this evening, two motorcyclists that die in St. Elizabeth crashes. Two motorcyclists died in separate crashes in St. Elizabeth on Sunday night, and a man is in police custody after fleeing one of the accident scenes. Police identified the victims as a Shane Shaw, 28, a resident of Withorn District, and the Odin Parchment. Reports are that about 6.30 p.m., a motor car collided with a Shaw's motorcycle on the Holland Bamboo Main Road, resulting in him being flung from the bike. He was taken to hospital, where he was pronounced dead. Police said the driver of the car involved in the crash fled the scene on Sunday night and subsequently turned himself in at the Lakovia police station Monday morning. Further investigations revealed that the man does not have a driver's license. In the other incident, police said the preliminary reports are that Parchment was hit from a motorcycle on the Newell Main Road. He was pronounced dead at hospital. Portland Baker on the run after allegedly stabbing his colleague. A man is dead and another is on the run following an early morning stabbing incident near a bakery in Port Antonio on Monday. The police say the two men, who both worked at the bakery, were in a heated argument shortly before 6 a.m. It is alleged that one of the men pulled a baker's knife and chased the other before stabbing him in the neck from behind. The wounded man was rushed to the Port Antonio Hospital but was pronounced dead upon arrival. The police are seeking the suspected killer who ran from the scene. It is understood that both the men knew each other very well and they are from the same community of Django Gully near Bondebroke, Portland. Islington residents protest the police account of car chase and the shooting in St. Mary. Residents of Islington, St. Mary are calling for the release of the four people in custody in connection with an incident on Saturday morning along the Whitehall Main Road in the parish. The police say one man was fatally shot when people traveling in a silver Toyota Axio motor car opened the fire at them, falling a chase. He was later identified as 25-year-old Roshane Loveless. Two women and the two men have been detained. Angry residents staged a protest outside the Islington police station on Monday morning, disputing the police's account of the shooting. One resident claimed that the police fired at the vehicle with a group of young people unprovoked. Them are you not mix up with that was in the car, not mix up them and run from them because they believed it was gunman. A police vehicle coming down and you stop somebody and they do not stop. The, the duty of the police is to turn on the siren or the flash of light. That was not done. So the man them think that it was gunman because they have the bright focus light on the car so they could not see them behind them who it, who it was. You see me? And they're coming up to the station and you kill them before kill the youth. But Inspector Karen Budan, who is in charge of the Islington police station, appealed to the residents to disperse and allow for the investigation to be completed. What I know about the law, Detectives probing string of killings in Clarendon family. Detectives in Clarendon are trying to determine the motive behind a series of deadly attacks on a family in the parish. Just the days after 43-year-old postmistress Debbie Ann Markland Barrett was gone down at her workplace in Palmer's Cross, gunmen struck again on Sunday, killing her brother. Omar Coker, 33, was fatally shot at a garage in Palmer's Cross sometime after 2 o'clock. Investigators reported that Mr. Cook, a mechanic, was working on a truck at the garage when armed men entered and shot him. He was taken to hospital, where he was pronounced dead. On Thursday, Mrs. Markland Barrett was inside a bar on the same building as at the post office when armed thugs shot her. She died on the scene. Her husband, who was a mechanic, was attacked and shot dead by unknown assailants a few weeks ago in Palmer's Cross. 
the CP Richard Stewart to replace Fitzbailey as head of JCF Crime and the Security Portfolio. The Jamaica Constabulary Force has announced that Deputy Commissioner of Police Richard Stewart will assume responsibility for its crime and the security portfolio effective Monday. He replaces recently retired Deputy Commissioner of Police Fitzbailey as head of the portfolio. The portfolio, widely regarded as one of the most challenging within the JCF, encompasses some of the nation's most critical areas of law enforcement, including crime prevention, investigations, and public safety. DCP Stewart, a seasoned officer with over 30 years of service, brings a wealth of experience to the role. He is credited with transforming the administrative arm of the GCF, modernizing training programs, and playing a key role in securing ISO 9001 certification for the force. His leadership in reshaping the training at the National Police College of Jamaica has garnered international recognition, positioning the GCF as a leader in law enforcement training. A graduate of the University of the West Indies, DCP Stewart holds degrees in both the law and accounting and has earned a reputation for his innovative approach to leadership. His appointment to the crime and security portfolio comes at a time when Jamaica continues to face significant crime challenges, and it is expected that his extensive background in both operational command and the strategic leadership will contribute to the ongoing efforts to enhance public safety. Manchester Man on Burglary and Assault Charges The Manchester police have arrested and charged a man with a burglary, malicious destruction of property, and assault following a break-in at a residence in Kingsland District on Wednesday, September 4. He is Davian Daly, otherwise called by Day or Davy, a 38-year-old landscaper from Kingsland District in the parish. Reports from the lawmen are that about 3.15 a.m., the complainant was alerted to a security breach at her home by her security company. Daly and his accomplice were reportedly confronted by security officers who responded. One of the men reportedly pointed an object at them, and in fear for their lives, one of the security officers allegedly discharged his firearm in the direction of the men who ran. Daly was subsequently apprehended and charged after a question-and-answer session. He was found to have sustained a gunshot wound to his leg. His court date is being finalized. Opposition calls for health care reform after visitor dies at the airport. The parliamentary opposition is calling for urgent health care reforms in western Jamaica following the death of a visitor to the island at the Sanctuary International Airport in St. James last week. On Wednesday, 71-year-old Leroy Smith was returning to the United States after visiting his family when he fell and hit his head at the baggage counter. Transport Minister Darrell Vaz is to investigate concerns that the airport's management was slow in rendering assistance. The lack of an available ambulance is also under investigation. Spokesman on Health Dr. Alfred Dawes says that the opposition cannot ignore the serious lack of a functioning healthcare system, particularly in Jamaica's tourism capital, which has already prompted travel advisories from the United States. Dr. Dawes says that the government should prioritize the public spending on fixing critical issues in health care. It is unfortunate that during this time of mourning, that the family has to be subjected to a public discourse surrounding the death of their loved one at the Sanctus International Airport. It is even more unfortunate that the official response has been one of blame shifting away from the Ministry of Health and Emergency Medical Services that ought to be available at the fire brigade. Less than five minutes away, the flank of fire brigade should have had an ambulance stationed with an emergency technical team available for deployment. That service is no longer functional. To say that there are five ambulances at the Cornell Regional Hospital is misleading. In fact, only two out of those five ambulances are roadworthy. One functions primarily as a shuttle bus, transferring patients between facilities for diagnostic uh, services that have been outsourced, which leads only one functioning emergency response vehicle, 
which at the time of the, the distress call was attending to another emergency. Thank you everyone for watching. See you tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. for another news update.